Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So my classic album inspection today is Out of This World by Europe, which was released on August the 9th, 1988. It's 35 years old today. Uh, so this was their album, it was the follow-up to the final countdown, and it was the first album with guitarist Key Marcello. So if people remember rightly, John Norum, Europe's uh, original and classic guitarist, who's back in the band now. Um, he left shortly after the final countdown sort of uh, broke out everywhere because he didn't like all the teenage girls at gigs and he didn't like what he... Did to what he felt about his integrity, I guess. He was a huge classic rock fan of Deep Purple and UFO, Shanker, stuff like that, and it just didn't uh, compute for him. Uh, so, you know, due respect to him for doing that. Uh, but the band got Key Marcello, and he did uh, the most of the tour and his famous Flight of the Bumblebee style solo spot. Uh, and like um, when that tour finished, I think they went straight into writing uh, and recording this probably. So they recorded in London at Olympic and Tinehouse Studios and as big UFO fans, they got Ron Neverson in to produce it. Neverson does a cracking job on this. I mean, it has typical 80s production, um, but it's good. You know, it's good um, sounds on this record. Uh, so the album sold 3 million copies and made 19 in the US charts and 12 in the UK. Uh, so it did really well, but... I think there was that perception it hadn't done as well as the final countdown because that sold six million and that's because it had such a bit obviously the huge hit i think the final countdown was number one in 31 countries or something crazy uh it was superstitious did pretty well probably europe's greatest track in many respects and so it was a great solo as well um so you know it's in that era you know if you've sold a lot of albums people expect you to do the same again uh obviously def leppard managed to do it with uh pyromania to hysteria um, and some other bands, you know, had good runs, but um, Europe would kind of tail off after this. But um, let's uh, go through the the, the, the record. Um, I love it. Like I say, it came out 9th of August. It was the month before I went to college to study music in Newcastle, six weeks before. I think I'd seen the Superstitious video on TV, and I thought, Jesus Christ, that guitar solo is incredible. I've got to buy this album. Because I was kind of a bit, oh, Europe. Um, but I bought the album, it was on red vinyl. Um, I, oh, I can't remember, it was from this weird record shop. If anyone here watching this knows Lancaster, if you go to the top of the pedestrianised street towards the castle, right at the top there before you cross the roads, so there was a record shop on you. Right, I bought Big Life by Night Ranger there. That's another one I can remember buying there, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was called. Anyway, I've totally digressed there. But, um, so yeah, obviously Superstitious, not much you say about his track, it's a great tune, really good, almost a gospel style intro really cool sort of uh, pumping, you know, slow riff with the quarter notes on the bass and cool Hammond organ keyboards. And I think people forget that with Europe, you know, they were quite happy when they got the chance to put in those 70 sounds and that deep purple influence. And I think that's why the track works. It's got its one foot very in the 80s, but it's got one foot in the 70s. Great vocal by Joe Tempest, I think. Um, he gets sort of overlooked when people think of great frontmen and great singers, but he ticks the boxes for me. He writes all the songs on this album, apart from track four and track eight, which are co-written by Key Marcello and Mick McHaley. And it's a great song as well. So the second track's Let the Good Times Rock. This is a catchy sort of party rock song. I think you can hear that the guitar's been pushed. It's got a nice grinding riff by Key. Uh, which um, I think one of the reasons John Norman got really disillusioned with the final countdown, the album before that, Winter Tomorrow, so I'll look at it at the end a little. Um, you know, the balance on keyboards and guitar was great. It had that sort of UFO purple sound rainbow. But when they did the final countdown, the guitars were just put down in the mix. It's not a great sounding record, the final countdown. And I think it's Europe's weakest album, you know, aside from the debut, it's the weakest album of that era. Um, although it's got some really good tracks, but the production doesn't help. But this, this album kind of redresses that. The guitar and the keyboard balance is, is there more. Um, track number three, so they re-recorded Open Your Heart from the Wings of Tomorrow album. Uh, and um, they prove on it, I think. Uh, it's got a better production than Key does a, a really cool solo. Forms and Four, that was a single, really good track. Then you've got More Than Meets the Eye, this was another single. This is maybe the best track on the album. It's just a great bouncy pop metal track. Um, nice keyboards, absolutely cracking chorus. Uh, and the solo is stunning. If you've not heard this song, you've not heard the solo. Key just does a lovely, um, you know, pentatonic blues lick intro for it with some big Lukather bends. And he does a great tapping bit. And then he's into the solo. He does some lovely whammy slurring at the end. And it's, it's one of those perfectly crafted solos. I would say every single solo in this album's obviously been worked out. He's obviously planned what he's going to do. and uh, But they don't lack feel or anything, but they fit each song perfectly. Um, he plays in the neck pickup most of the time, 89% of the time, and he has a bit of chorus on it, reverb delay. Uh, and it's it's a very posh, 
you know, 80 sound, but it's good. They got uh, Coast to Coast. This is the big power ballad. Um, uh, sort of going for the White Snake UFO vibe. I, I really like it again. Lovely sort of cheesy lighters in the air, waving your hands type of chorus. But, you know, they do it really well. Lovely solo by Key. You can really hear him getting a lot of digging. And side one of the original vinyl, Finish with Ready or Not. This is a live favourite by the band. So it's got a really cool pentatonic riff. Um, it's just a, you know, let's hit the stage, let's rock type of song. Marcello goes a bit more neoclassical. It goes to kind of Phrygian dominant and does a nice arpeggio bit. So, you know, Key was quite interesting. He was obviously dancing with a bit of Steve Vibe, some whammy stuff, a bit of Malmsteen. I think he got into Schenker when he actually joined the band because they were sort of mad UFO fans. So it's kind of weird. Norm was a huge Schenker fan. You could hear and he's playing. And Key joined. He's like, look, you've got to hear more Schenker. Um... Uh, and yeah, so you can hear those things coming out, but because of that thick neck pickup tone and little quirky kind of outside things he does as well, um, uh, he, you know, he's got a style that kind of stands out for me. Very underrated guitarist. So that was side one. There's, there's not a bad track on it. Uh, this isn't to everyone's taste. It is pop metal. It has got AOR elements and ballad elements. I just, I just really like it. I loved it at the time. Um, it was like a, you know, a major soundtrack um, to that part of uh, my life. So. Side two opens with, um, sorry, I'm just looking at it, Sign of the Times. So this is another live favourite to still play this. Got a really cool keyboard intro. Um, uh, again, some chunky riffing on it, massive chorus, brilliant solo, and key gets right up on the high bends and you hear all this quality. Uh, then it's the heaviest track on the album, uh, just the beginning. Got a really grinding riff this. Um, uh, I really like it. I think they played it live on the tour and I was really excited because my cello solo is absolutely storming. Uh, and he does a cool tapping thing, some cool whammies, and he does a bit that's a bit outside. He was a bit like Alan Holdsworth fan. If you go on YouTube, you'll find him actually playing kind of jazz with a guy back in 1980 on some TV programme. Uh, or maybe it's a news feature f about young people playing an instrument. I'm not sure. I mean, he would be about 20 then. But it's uh, got his Swedish spelling of his name. Um, so that's a great track. Then it's Never Say Die next. I'm just going to check on here. Uh, yeah, so this is, again, it's another one, more sort of Hammond-style keyboards, catchy, lovely solo on this, uh, great breakdown after the chorus um, with some really nice backing vocals. And, you know, the production's not over-egged on this, I and mean, I think Ron Neverson did a really cool job. There's a couple of tracks of strings on them that Mike Moran did, so he played keyboards for Ozzy, I think, around the time of Ultimate Sin. And am I right in thinking he did that Eurovision hit rock bottom, not the UFO one with Lindsay DePaul? I think so. Could be wrong. Um, but yeah, it's not overblown. It's it's big, um, but he, he hasn't he hasn't put loads of vocal backing vocals on. He hasn't put loads of extra guitars. You know, it's kind of, it's done well. Um, I think Never City's hard tax taskmaster. Um, I think him and Marcello batted heads a bit. Um, but Neverson said he thought Marcello was one of the greatest guitar players he ever worked with. And that's, this guy's worked with Shanker, you know. Um, then you've got uh, Lights and Shadows. This is a kind of uh, slow grindy one probably the weakest track up to now but it's still a good track four minutes and four and then you've got towers calling uh this is another cool track again maybe not as good as the tracks have gone before but it's still solid 348 i think if you notice every single track on this album is not much more than four and a half minutes and tends to be three and a half minutes it's really really well arranged so they managed to fit 12 tracks in number four under 48 minutes so um, just really good radio rock writing. Any one of these songs could be released as a single in a lot of ways. And people criticise Europe for that, but, you know, I like my songs catching to the point. It does a nice whammy slurring on the Towers Calling solo key. Um, again, the vocals from Joey Goods, uh, Mick Michaelis' keyboards are blended in well, uh, John Levin's bass, Ian Hoglund's drums, you know, not a spectacular rhythm section, but very solid uh, play for the tune. Then it finishes with a piano ballad, three minutes and four. Kind of going for the try me vibe, I guess, professional violence, but no solo, no uh, drums coming in. Uh, again, nice strings by uh, Mike Moran on this, I think. Uh, and that finishes the album. Uh, and yeah, it's just a really, really cracking, cracking hard rock, uh, heavy rock, S slash AOR album of its time. Um, 35 years old today. Europe out as well. Thanks for checking it out.